is to challenge every person within the sound of our voices today with the truth that soon Jesus Christ is going to come. And the central question is this. If Christ were to come today, are you ready for him to come? And if you're Getting ready for the second coming of Christ is why these people are here at this conference on prophecy in Houston, Texas. The guest today is a superstar in the world of biblical prophecy. Dr. Tim LaHaye is an expert on the Bible's book of Revelation, which some Christians interpret as a literal account of how the world will end. Here we have the rapture of the church is going to come at any time, and possibly within the lifetime of many of us. After that is a, a little seven-year tribulation period when the, God will shake the earth and give man an opportunity to, to have missed the rapture to receive Christ. Dr. LaHaye has turned his interest in prophecy into a publishing phenomenon with a fiction series based on the book of Revelation. Thank you. That's our card right there. I'm going to give cash instead. Do you have this in paperback? I do not. So it's just starting on us? There's a signal strike. Called Left Behind, the series begins with the key event in Revelation, the rapture when all believers are taken up to heaven and non-believers are left behind. We had the two together. Five of the books in the series have debuted at number one on the US bestseller list. They regularly outsell authors like John Grisham and Stephen King. Well, this happening all over America. Tim LaHaye says he got the inspiration on a plane trip 15 years ago when he was thinking about the rapture. And I uh, was sitting there and uh, the captain came out of the cabin and started flirting with a flight attendant. And I looked down and I noticed he had a wedding ring on, but she didn't. And the sparks between them were obvious. And I began to think, well, now what would happen if when he went back into the cabin, um, if she's pounding on the door and she's screaming, Captain, there are a hundred people missing from our aircraft. They're not here. They're not anywhere. Hey, their shoes, their clothes, their glasses, it's crazy. They're all left behind. The people are gone. Left Behind has been made into a movie. While the film never came close to the success of the books, it tells the same story. The central character is the plane's captain. My baby! They haven't gone far. Please just take your seat. And so he comes back and he turns to the co-pilot and he says, you don't suppose this is that rapture that my wife's been telling me about? And then it dawns on him. If it is, when I get home, she'll be gone because she was a Christian and I'll be left behind. And he becomes the hero for the entire series. While Christians are taken up to heaven, those left behind wage a seven-year battle on earth against forces led by the Antichrist. I mean, can you see why these books are so popular now, though, and have been for the last, you know, eight years or so? Well, basically because uh there's an element of truth. Uh, it's, it's fiction characters that describe the truth. And so many people want to know about the future. And uh, they, these books give it to them in a very short dose, interesting manner. It's a, an excellent tool for education. Right. Can I just hug you? Thank you. You've made my day. I think you're amazing, and I absolutely love the books. I love them. It's not surprising that at the Prophecy Conference, sales are booming, but this is a nationwide phenomenon. Including offshoots like children's books and videos, 58 million copies have sold, the vast majority in America. Probably a lifetime. A lifetime. I've been studying these since I was... LaHaye claims the books have converted many people to Christianity. In this, I, I couldn't believe everything that happened, and I cannot wait for the second one to come out after. From reading the Left Behind series, uh, I went on to read Revelation itself, 
and I went on to read the book of Daniel, and I'm going on to study the Bible. Just overall, I've just got such a deep interest in it now. It's, I, I can't believe it. I think about it every day. Uh, everything I do uh, causes me to think prophecy, future, God, Jesus, and it's all I think about. I think it was a brilliant idea that these gentlemen decided to go on a fiction route. For people that are non-believers, they're able to read these books almost like a John Gresham. They're as exciting, as gripping as something like Robert Ludlum or John Gresham. Um, and yet they still clearly receive the message that's intended. So I think fiction kind of brings it to the masses and therefore evangelizes. The books themselves are called the Left Behind series. The latest in that series, The Indwelling, there you see its cover, The Beast Takes Possession, is number one this week and last on the New York Times bestseller list in fiction. While Tim LaHaye provides the theological inspiration for the books, he works with author Jerry Jenkins to actually write them. From his home in Colorado Springs, Jenkins is preparing to begin work on the much-anticipated 12th book in the series. So these are not necessarily the order of events the way they'll appear in the novel because he does leave that to me, but it's the order of events as they appear in the prophecies. It's a unique partnership. LaHaye provides Jenkins with a set of briefing notes that contain passages from the book of Revelation followed by an interpretation. Jenkins then turns this into a novel. Rather than try to interpret everything symbolically, he tries to interpret it literally. Uh, we get criticized for that, but it really has opened, uh, opened this up to, to people. When it says that the meteors fall and the heavens are shaken, he takes that literally. And so that's a novelist dream. I get to describe that, put my characters in the way of that, and, uh, and see what happens. While some may turn to the books because of their interest in Christianity, most will get more than just a spiritual boost. The stories also carry a distinctly political message. That serpent has stood between us and paradise ever since. In the books and the film, the modern-day Antichrist is the head of the United Nations. He gets to that position with the help of shadowy international financiers. <laughs> Nikolai, you know. That's preposterous. Do not lie to me. The casting of the Antichrist as the head of the UN reflects LaHaye's own personal suspicions. Do you know who you're dealing with? Do you? Why did you choose the United Nations to be the body that the Antichrist essentially uses to take over with? Well, he's going to establish a one world government. That's one reason Christians are suspicious of globalism. They see it as maybe a precursor of Antichrist. And I just use the United Nations because it's an a entity today that people can understand. It may not be the United Nations. It may be something else. I, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised in today's geopolitical situation where the United Nations and the European common market uh, will gradually grow together and join other countries of the world uh, against the United States, the superpower, and uh, gradually they will move their, their center of government to Iraq. An interesting thing in the Bible is... This is from your book, or this is what you're saying will happen? Well, this is what I'm saying will probably happen, that the capital of uh, the Antichrist kingdom will be in Babylon. One thing you have to understand about Tim LaHaye is that he's paranoid, and, and I say that up front without apology, the man's paranoid. Rob Boston works for a lobby group in Washington, D.C. called Americans United for Separation of Church and State. He's followed Tim LaHaye for decades, ever since LaHaye was one of the key architects of the religious right, a conservative Christian movement set up in the 70s designed to influence public policy. There are people in the religious right, very a lot of people in the religious right, who believe that from day one, the United States was found, found as almost God's experiment. That it was God's will that we would uh, spread across the continent, and we did. That it was God's will that we would vanquish 
the godless atheists of the Soviet Union, and we did. And now it's God's will that we become the most powerful nation on the earth and that by default, we run the world. The UN is standing in the way of that. The UN, according to the religious right and the far right, wants to run the world instead. Can you imagine the wonderful plan God has for our future? And that plan is far better than any religion in the world. Would you compare it with the Muslim religion? We're, we hear a lot about that today. You know, you kill yourself in a suicide attempt and you can go into heaven and, and you have at your disposal 14 dark card maidens or some said 72 or whatever. Um, my, my point is, what about the maidens? That doesn't sound like heaven to me for the maidens. <laughs> but uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and then you think of the, the, the Hindu religion. Rob Boston is uncomfortable with the political agenda underpinning Bible prophecy. The reason I get alarmed by some of these folks is because they are taking a controversial interpretation of the, of the book of Revelation, which is a symbol-laden, metaphorical book that many people believe described events in first century Rome. They're taking that and, and trying to impose that on modern-day society and saying that certain behaviors should follow from that. That, that there are ways that people ought to vote or get involved in politics because of this interpretation of the book of Revelation. Uh, a good example of that is the, the ongoing efforts to, to bring peace to the Middle East. There are people who have disagreed with some of the approaches that have been suggested because the approach might conflict with an interpretation of the book of Revelation. Uh, of this idea. Now, here's the scary part. At the Prophecy Conference in Texas, preachers are teaching that according to the Bible, Israel is for the Jews only. God just said, this is going to be your land. God declared it. Now that's going to become extremely important in a few moments to our better understanding of the situation in the Middle East today. Now, in this Should there be a Palestinian state? I don't think so, because that's a, the Palestinians were non-existent, really, for many, many centuries. Uh, they should be uh, assimilated by the other Arab countries that uh, could have assimilated them and solved this problem. But it's a manufactured problem. If he indeed is not LaHaye's message is not only preached from the pulpit. Influential Republican and House Majority Leader Tom DeLay actively lobbies against a Palestinian state, based in part on his interpretation of the Bible. This politician is a hero at the Prophecy Conference. Lives are at stake here. We, we can't allow this carnage and the killing to go on because some television preacher thinks it conflicts with a, a thousand-year-old book. Uh, yet there are people urging our national leaders to take just that approach. So are they just a good read, or are the Left Behind books something more powerful? According to Rob Boston, it depends on who's reading them. The people that concern me are the ones who take this seriously and look at these books as a blueprint of things to come and are wondering how they can help bring all that about. They're the ones that keep me up at night. But I just wanted to meet you. And just tell you, I thought you did a wonderful job today.